Welcome back to the sawmill. It's August the 9th. It is 8.20 in the morning. I just took Bruno to school. It's a foggy day here. We got a lot of fog back here on the mountain behind me. Pretty foggy this morning. It's supposed to warm up later though and be a hot one. Real quick here before we get the day started. The t-shirt should be here by Monday or Tuesday at the latest. I got approval on the final design just a few days ago and they look phenomenal. I just I love this new design that my buddy made up for us with the, uh, the beard and the glasses on the back of the shirt. And the new logo here on the front. I think they look really well. The gray and the green both look good. So appreciate you guys ordering them. And FedEx should have them here hopefully by the first of the week. And as soon as we get them, we'll package them up and ship them out to you. Out here checking the kiln as well before we get to the sawmill. This is day number seven of this load of white oak. About two or three hours from now, we'll come back out here and check the moisture levels of the wood. And the temperature by then will be up in about 125 or probably higher than that actually it depends on how hot it gets today but everything's going well on this load it's about 12 percent as of yesterday i'm hoping today we'll do another reading and hopefully get to about 10 percent maybe 11. white oak you got to dry kind of slow because it's prone for defects so i'm kind of babying this load a little bit that's why i'm also not running the compressor at night and letting that wood rest at night and uh, just being extra careful on it. Something else here, guys. I was asked about that lumber in the kiln, the white oak, what I'm gonna be doing with it. Well, the main purpose for a lot of it is to build some gates here at the farm. Just about every one of them are in rough shape. I gotta get some new treated posts here as well. I don't know how long these things have been here, but a long time, as you can see. They're rotted down there at the bottom. These are some old telephone poles. This one over here is in pretty poor shape also. It doesn't really wobble as much when you push on it, but as you can see, it needs to be replaced as well. These are old telephone poles. They make good posts, but when they're gone, they're gone. They also make a really good perch for the cat to sit on. See the gate right there, it's also in poor condition. So we're gonna take that white oak that's in the kiln as soon as it's dry and make two old style timber frame gates here, two six footers to replace this 12 footer. But that's coming up pretty soon guys. I'm really looking forward to building this gate. Let's go over these measurements real fast. I am anxious to get this thing open. I bought this log about two weeks ago off a buddy of mine. He's a fireman. He does some tree work and some logging on the side. And he's always bringing me some good stuff. And this walnut here looks like it's gonna be a real good one, guys. It's gonna be a nice log. The length is eight feet, if I remember right. Yep, eight feet and about three inches. I got the large end down here on the operator side and I've got it turned to the right orientation to get the widest boards which is going to be about 24 inches. Double check something. Yeah, that's the right orientation down here. But more importantly, the orientation here on the crotch. So stick with me here guys, let me explain this to you. Here's what we're looking at. We have a limb right here on the side, one on the top, 
And this one on the top actually would get a wider board. It would probably be about two inches wider if we orientate this right here parallel to the saw head and cut slabs this way. But this right here will have better crotch grain because the limb is a bigger diameter. It's about 13 inches. This one up here is about nine inches. So you'll have more crotch figure getting captured right here than you would on this side. So that's the main reason we went with this crotch wood, even though it's not as wide, we'll have a lot more figure in here. And the second reason is down here toward the bottom. As you can see down here toward the small end, the diameter down here is about 21 inches. We have another knot right here and it's only about seven inches, but there's a good possibility on maybe one or two slabs will catch some of this crotch figure down here and have two highly figured areas on maybe one or two slabs, at least one slab, maybe two. Do a quick check over here, everything looks good. Bark is pretty clean, it's not too dirty, not a lot of mud in there. Should be pretty good on sawing today. We'll be sawing these into nine quarter slabs as we always do here in the channel when dealing with highly figured walnut like this. Using the Wood Miser Double Hard number seven degree blades and the thickness on this blade is 055 so it's a little bit thicker than my usual blade but it cuts really flat. I really like these blades. I anticipate a blade change probably after two or three slab cuts. That's the same blade that me and dad used on the white oath the other day. And I noticed it getting a little dull toward the end. So hopefully I'll get about two or three slabs cut today before we change it over. So uh, let's get to it. It should be a great day of sawing here, guys. After this one's over with, American Beach. I've never even sawed beach before. I'm really looking forward to that. All right.
So this is the second slab that we're looking at right now. The first slab was decent and had a lot of sap wood in it and no figure or nothing like that going on. And the reason I stopped and inspected that one after I saw it was I thought I hit a nail. I heard what I thought was metal getting cut halfway down through it. And I don't know if that would come through the video or not, but it sure sounded like I hit metal. And I looked all over that slab underneath it on both sides and I just didn't see anything. And I kept on milling and we cut two more slabs after that one and they're fine. So apparently I hit maybe a really hard knot or something in there. I don't know what it was, but there's no signs of metal. And the, and the teeth and the blade are still set. So it was, you know, that's usually a sign of hitting metal. You'll lose your set in your teeth. As I'm coming in from down here, I'm going through this crotch figure and going out the other end and it's smooth. I got a little bit of a ripple around this crotch figure and uh, that's due to speed and this open grain and this face grain rather right here. A lot of end grain coming up in this crotch figure. It's kind of like sawing a knot. It's hard to saw. And I went a little too fast through there, which is no big deal. Whenever this is kiln dried and planed down to size, you'll never see these. So no big deal there either. So these are pretty nice. We've got a lot of sap wood on the sides, which is expected. But right here, once we get this dust off and throw some water on it, should be some really nice figure hiding in there.